Yo guys, what's going on? It's Dub here. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to add a bouncy or elastic type of movement to anything inside of Fusion. So what you're going to need is a comp you're working in. So whether that be a clip, a adjustment clip, or a Fusion comp. I'm going to use a Fusion comp for this example. And now you're just going to want to go into Fusion. Once you're in Fusion, you're going to want to find the parameter that you want to modify. So for me, I'm going to use a text node and I'm just going to call it bounce. And I'm going to affect the size parameter now. So what you're going to want to do is find it right click on the text of the parameter you want to change go to modify with and then anim curves click that and then now you're going to want to go to the modifiers tab all right so now that we are in the modifiers tab what you're going to want to do is go to curve at the top right and then change the curve from linear to easing and then on in and out you're going to leave the first one on none and change the second one to elastic once it's elastic you can see what's changed here and now if you want to see more changes go and open your spline and then click on the text and now you can see the animation that the anims curves has added. So once you're here, if you play it, now you can see we have a bounce effect, but it is clipping outside of the screen and we don't want that. So how you can change that is by changing the overall size of the parameter. So this is basically like a transform node for the anim curves. So I'm just gonna take the scale and turn it down a bit. And as we can see now at the peak of that bounce where it's clipping, I can just turn it so I can make sure it's not clipping out. And if I play it again, now it's not clipping anymore. And right here, this is the offset. This changes the starting point to be higher so there's much less bounce going on too and if you experiment with the two scaling options with scale and offset let's say i turn the scaling down and have the offset up so this is how we get a bounce out to in you just have to turn the scale down and then turn the offset up and then it comes from out to in as you can see by the graph here but if we turn the scale back up it goes up and then stops there so that's why you can mess around with the offset to get the kind of result you want with your bounce same thing with the scale and then you can turn both of them up and you can see we have barely any movement because they both start at a relatively similar place so now what i'm going to be showing you guys is the two options right here so what time scale does is it changes how long it will take for the entire animation to complete so the lower number you have it the longer the animation will be and the shorter number it is the shorter it will be so as you can see here the animation takes about that long to complete and you can see here it starts bugging out a little bit when you open and spline too many times and try to zoom it in so just if that bugs out just close the text right here and then just re-enable it so you can see right here this is the curve of the bounce where my red highlight is so if i turn the time scale up this will result in a shorter animation and a quicker bounce as you can see it's much tighter but if i change the time scale and turn it down you can see the curve start to stretch out and this will cause the bounce animation to be slower and take longer to complete and now the time offset what it does is it changes when the animation happens so when you go back with a lower number it will cause it to go back frames but if you move it forward it will cause the animation to start later so as you can see if i turn it back the animation is already completing but if i turn it forward the animation doesn't start until that point and that's pretty much it. You can keyframe all the options too if you want, but now I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do this on an image with a transform node. So I'm gonna add a transform node. I'm going to uncheck size and aspect, though you could also use the size to make it bounce like text like this, but I don't want that. Instead, I'm going to uncheck it, right click on the size and then do a modify with anim curves. And I am also going to change the edges from canvas to duplicate while I'm here. You could also use mirror, but I prefer duplicate. Now you're gonna to wanna to go to the modifiers tab and then change your settings once again to easing and then elastic right here and now i'm going to change my settings so for the scale i like to do 1.1 for this for the offset i like to do somewhere around negative 0.1 or 0.2 for this i'm just going to do 0.1 and then now for the time scale you're going to want to mess with this so for me i'm going to use 1.3 and then for the time offset this is where you're going to want to mess with it so as you can see we have nothing on the first frame but for me i'm going to change the time offset to be right around here and now as you can can see I have my bounce animation right here and I can change my time scaling if I want to make it longer and now also what you can do is as you can see here there is a little bit of jittery movement at the end here you can see where it slows down if you don't want that you can click clip low and as you can see this will get rid of most of the low movement but you can do the same thing with the high so if you click clip high this will basically get rid of any of the high movement and make it choppy in comparison but normally i leave them off unless you want to clip the low because this helps make it look a little bit smoother occasionally but otherwise just leave it like that and mess with the settings until you're happy and after you do that you can also go to tools settings and then enable motion blur for this and this will help the bounce look a little bit smoother as you can see with that motion blur 
And there you go. That is how I use anim curves to add bounces or any kind of elastic movement to any parameter I want inside of DaVinci Resolve. Some parameters won't let you apply anim curves. For example, the center or the pivot, if I right click and go modify with, you see there are no anim curves here. So you can't do the elastic movement on things like that, but the size and other things like that, if you right click and modify with, you can. So you'll just have to find what you want to modify it with and if it will work so then you can add the movement that you want. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing and liking. This would help me out a ton as I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel as well as help you guys with more free DaVinci Resolve tutorials and more editing related content in the future. So I'll see you guys next time. Later.